Hello, good afternoon. My name is Dr. Trudy Fufun, and it's a weekend, the 27th of November, 2021, and it's a popular weekend YouTube open clinic. Today's topic is very, very important. Today, we're going to look at vaginal dryness, use of lubricants, and what you can know and steps you can take to make sure you maximize your potentials of becoming pregnant. So we're gonna learn about the likely reason why you might be experiencing vaginal dryness. At some stage in your life as a woman, you will experience vaginal dryness. Now that vaginal dryness might be natural. It might be a sign you might have hormonal imbalance. It can also be a sign of infection, but generally, Vaginal dryness is not unusual. It's not uncommon, especially as you are getting older. So it's likely you're currently experiencing vaginal dryness and you've been wondering what you can do to get some help. So I'm going to help you to understand the likely reason why you might be having vaginal dryness right now and what you can do to get some relief. So knowledge is power. So please, when you come in, just join the presentation. You see, the vagina, it's a very, very, very special organ. So this is your vagina, okay? So the vagina naturally, it's empowered, it's equipped with hormones, with structures that will get the vagina ready for the role of Procreation. Your vagina is used for three purposes. Number one, giving birth. Number two, passing our urine. Number three, love making. So these are the three important natural functions of your vagina. Now, when it comes to the love making aspect, when you are in the right place, when you're in the right mood, that means you got aroused. So you saw your partner, you are in the mood, you are ready. There are some glands that will open and fluid will rush into the vagina to get your vagina ready. So every woman still within her reproductive phase of life is expected to have moist, wet vagina in course of planning for sexual intercourse. Now, there's an important hormone which elaborates the fluid, which helps in keeping your vagina moist. It's called estrogen. Now, by default, for every woman, the level of your estrogen is not going to be the same. So as you're getting older, your estrogen will be reducing. So the more you are getting older, the fewer estrogen you have, the more the likelihood you're going to be having more frequency of vaginal dryness. So the level of dryness you might have now in your 40 might not be the level of dryness you will have when you're 50. When you are 25, your vagina is relatively moist. So you can easily get wet. You can easily have moistness in your vagina because you have more estrogen when you're younger. So vaginal dryness, it's mainly experienced by women naturally as they are getting older because of reduction in estrogen. Now, when you have vaginal dryness, what are those things you can do to give yourself some relief? This is where your lubricants can come in. So lubricants are special gel chemicals that some women put in their vagina to aid in creating a moist environment, especially during sexual intercourse. Now, together with the vaginal dryness, some women, when they are getting older, they will also notice depression in their libido. Libido is your ability to have sexual urge to engage in sex with your partner. So when some women are experiencing dry vagina, they will also notice reduction in the libido, reduction in the urge to make love. And this is a red signal, especially if you're planning to start your family. Now, when it comes to lubricants, not all lubricants are helpful in regards to starting your family. 
if your purpose of using lubricants is just to enjoy your sexual intercourse, you are not interested in making babies, it's okay. You can use your KY jelly. You can use anything that it's friendly to the vagina. But if you are intending to start your family, if you are intending to become pregnant, there are some vaginal lubricants you have to be very careful with. This is because those vaginal lubricants can have adverse effect on the sperm. Remember that the sperm is very, very sensitive. For the sperm to get a woman pregnant, it must pass through the vagina, get to the cervix, get to the womb. So when you are using some lubricants, they might create a barrier. Some of them might contain what we call spermicides. Spermicides are chemicals that kill sperm. So it's not all lubricants that are safe for women that want to start their family. So if you want to start your family, please be mindful the type of lubricants you use. It's not every lubricant you should use including your water and saliva. Your water and saliva are not friendly when it comes to fertility. Because of the acidity in the saliva, because of the nature of water, they will not aid in the process of getting a woman pregnant. There are some few lubricants that will help you to become pregnant. So those lubricants will play two role. They will help to make your vagina moist so that in course of love making, you will not feel pain, you will not bleed, you will enjoy it, then the possibility you're going to have, gonna have an orgasm is high. When you are doing that, they will also aid the sperm. Savaka mucus ordinarily helps to nurture the sperm and make sure the sperm is in a good place. So the few approved, fertility-friendly lubricants are the only ones you should use if your aim of dealing with vaginal dryness is to aid you're becoming pregnant, then you need to be mindful. There are a couple of them you can use, then there are some you cannot use because they will not help you. Number one, the popularly recommended lubricant, fertility-friendly lubricant, that's a lubricant that will help you if you're planning to become pregnant is what? Pre-seed. Pre-seed. So I want you to take note of the name. It's globally available. If you're in Nigeria, you can go to your online shop. You can order pre-seed. You might not have it in your pharmaceutical shop, but pre-seed is sperm-friendly. If you don't have pre-seed, you can also use another type of lubricant we call Conceive Plus. So pre-seed, Conceive Plus are healthy. They are helpful. They will help the sperm. They will make sure you are pregnant naturally if other factors are constant. Now, in some situations, if you don't have the wherewithal to go for pre-seed or conceive plus, you can use mustard oil. Mustard oil. It helps in motility. Now, the most important factor in the sperm that will get a woman pregnant is what? Motility. If you have the best sperm in the world and you deposit them in the vagina, but they are sleeping in the vagina, you will not get pregnant. So we want majority of the sperm to be motile, to be fast runner, so that once you deposit it in the vagina, they will pass the cervix, they will get to the womb, they will, they will begin to go to the tubes. The sperm must get to the tubes to get the woman pregnant. So precede and conceive plus. And in some situations, if you don't have the money, you can go for mustard oil. Some people can also use canola or plain baby oil. Plain baby oil. These are improvised lubricants. Listen to me carefully. The ones you can get that will work is pre-seed or conceive plus. In lieu of pre-seed and conceive plus, because sex do not have a timetable. You can have it anytime. You might not be in the mood. Your partner might be in the mood. And before you blink, you've had it. Now, if you want to increase your chance, and probably you haven't ordered your pre-seed or conceive plus, if you have plain baby oil or canola oil or mustard oil, you can use them. They are good options. Now, please. If you are using them, 
be careful. Some women have very sensitive vagina. They can react to baby oil. They can react to any other oil. So be mindful of your vaginal environment. Women have different types of vagina. There are some women that react to condoms. There are some women that react to sperm. There are some women that react to anything that has contact with the vagina. So if you are in that category, be mindful. Now, while all these lubricants are helpful, it's important you understand that if you play your natural role as a woman, if you play your natural role as a man, you guys don't even need lubricants. Because by default, if both parties understand the pathway of lovemaking, if both parties understand the role of foreplay, then you don't need lubricants. So the first thing I will tell you to do today, if you are genuine and you are in a loving relationship and both of you desire each other, you do not need lubricants, even when you are getting older. Because by default, if your partner plays his role in foreplay, you will be ready. The problem is the man is in a hurry and the woman is not ready. So when the man is in a hurry, the, the man will go in when the woman is not ready and it becomes to be very painful. Love making should not lead to a woman crying. Love making should not lead to someone pretending. Some women might be pretending, meanwhile they are in pain, but they are thinking about making babies. Your making baby process should be something of fun. It should not be pain. It should not be punishment. Once your lovemaking becomes a punishment, then you need to check it. You need to know what's going on. Now, please do not use KY jelly. KY jelly has a strong barrier towards helping you to become pregnant. KY jelly is not your average fertility-friendly lubricant. So do not use KY jelly. If you were using KY jelly in the past, stop right now. Now, there's another type of lubricant called Astroglide. Astroglide, they are also not helpful. So don't use your KY jelly. Don't use your Astroglide. Don't use other ones you have out there. If you are buying, read the label. When you go to the pharmaceutical shop, you know, they have a way of making sex toys, sex this, whatever to be so alluring. So when they, they can write a lot of things, they can advertise it. That you can make you feel like once you put it inside your vagina, you go to heaven. Take time. Read the label. Make sure they are fertility friendly. Make sure they are sperm friendly. Some of them might have beautiful scent. Some of them might have tingling sensation. It's okay if you're not looking for a baby. But if you're looking for a baby, do not use it. It will not help you. Now picture your partner having low sperm count, then on top of the low sperm count, the few sperm he's, he's got is going to be killed. It doesn't make sense. Now, I want to say this. Some people also apply saliva. Saliva has a high acidity content that might also prevent you from becoming pregnant. I know some of you love oral lovemaking, right? But carefully, meticulously, avoid interchanging saliva as a lubricant. Is going to lead to further delay. Don't use it. Don't use water. Use your precede or conceive plus. Very, very important. Now, what I'm going to say before I start taking questions, every woman has a normal vaginal discharge. Every woman is expected within a particular time in her cycle to release cervical mucus. That cervical mucus is more like milk. It's more like food to your sperm. It's a nutrient to your sperm. Now, there comes a point in time when you will experience a lot of them, especially if you're still ovulating. You will notice you have increase in your cervical egg white mucus. Now, as you're getting older, it's going to reduce because as you're getting older, your estrogen is going to be reduced. Every woman is going to experience this. Now, there are a couple of things you can do by yourself to help yourself to be in a good place. Don't help your vagina in any way. Don't put any foreign thing in the vagina. Don't put any scent. Don't put anything. I know they might be selling you a lot of dummies. Some of them might tell you to put food items. Some of them might tell you to put so many nonsense. Some of them will sell you, put this, put that. Do not help your vagina. Your vagina can play its role. The only thing your vagina needs is clean water. That's the only thing. Remember, there's a difference between the vagina and the vulva. The vagina is not what you see externally. The vagina is that opening. You have to open that cylindrical structure before you can get to the 
vagina. So please be mindful when you're using lubricants in treatment of vaginal dryness. If you use the right one, it's going to help you to become pregnant. Okay, so I'm going to take the questions from the clinic and then we can go for the evening. So please, if you have questions, feel free and ask about now. In the next 15 minutes, I will address your questions in real time. The clinic is open. Go ahead and ask your questions now. Please ask your questions. This is our open clinic every Saturday. If you haven't subscribed, please take a moment, subscribe, click on the notification so you won't miss any of my broadcasts. Tomorrow is a big day in our group. If you don't have a baby, if you're not pregnant, if you're frustrated, if you're on the verge of giving up, tomorrow can change your story. We have a big event. It's called our Believing for Baby Retreat for Couples. Make sure you register. You will not have any regrets. Okay? Fertility-friendly lubricants. Pre-seed. Pre-seed and conceive plus. Pre-seed. Pre-P-R-E-S-E-E-D. And conceive plus. They are the only approved lubricants you can get. Now, in the place of that, if you have canola oil, if you have mustard oil or plain baby oil, you can use it. But the problem with using this oil is the fact that it can lead to allergy. Okay? But the recommended one medically is Pre-Seed and Conceive Plus. Okay? All right. It's Baby Dance. Yes. Another recommended one is Baby Dance. So three, actually. Baby Dance, Conceive Plus, and Pre-Seed. If you can get any of them, it's good. You can use them. Okay? But please, do not use your saliva and water. They can stop you from, you know, becoming pregnant faster. Okay? All right. Do you still have any questions? Feel free to ask questions. Okay. Is there a natural way for a woman to increase her estrogen as she gets older? Now, what I will tell you is this. When you're getting older, the fewer things you introduce to your body, the better. Now, by default, if you eat good food, if you sleep properly, if you drink your water, if you exercise, you will help your natural hormones to function properly. So if you do that by default, you are going to get your organic estrogen, progesterone, FSH functioning properly. But however... If in the event that your natural ability to produce estrogen is depressed because of your age and it's confirmed, we have a diagnosis, we can give you estrogen cream. Your doctor will recommend that. But besides that, eat your fruits, eat your vegetables, exercise, drink a lot of water. Dehydration can make your vaginal dryness worse. Mood problems. Use of external drugs. Use of Clomid without prescription. Putting nonsense inside your vagina. You can damage your vagina. The problem is, in cost of looking for a baby, some people can damage their vagina. There are some women that will perpetually have vaginal pain for life because they've gone to so many places, so many idiots have put their hands inside your vagina, they perform so many rituals in your vagina, you've taken so many nonsense, they've given you so many food items to put in your vagina, and at the end of the day, baby, you don't have. Vagina pain is all over the place. You're not enjoying your lovemaking, so you're pretty much a very, very sad woman. Nobody should allow her vagina to be a portal for experiment. Your vagina is not a, an oven. You are not supposed to cook your vagina. So you don't put garlic. You don't put pepper. You don't put ogili. You don't put nonsense inside your vagina. Respect your vagina. Remember, there are three natural roles your vagina will play. Urine, baby, and lovemaking. So the penis is allowed. Your baby is allowed. Urine is allowed. Pad is allowed. Tampon is allowed then sometimes we can give you some drug to put inside your vagina. Once it's gone beyond this, do not put anything inside your vagina. 
Be fearful of your vagina. Your vagina is the citadel. Your vagina is the entrance of who you are. Your vagina can make you or mar you. Your vagina can heal you or harm you. If you want to be a great person, start from respecting your vagina. There is no other way to say this. Unfortunately, so many women don't even understand the role their vagina play in their future. Every Tom Dick and Harry is going there. Every grandmother is putting their hands there. Every quackery is putting their hands there. Anybody that opens their mouth, you go there and you open your vagina. Avoid doing that. Respect your vagina from today. Very important. If you can allow your vagina to play its role, you won't even need duplicates. If your partner it's conscientious, knows how to make love to you. You don't need lubricants. There are some 60-year-old women. There are some 50-year-old women who are enjoying their love making way much more than people that are in their 25. Why? Because they know. Because they eat good food. Because they avoid stress. Because they exercise. They drink water. And when you do this, you will still help your vagina to perform optimally in as much as age is not on your side. Okay, please keep asking your questions. I expect each and every one of you to ask about five questions. This is an area that so many women are not knowledgeable about. There are so many things you don't know about your vagina. There are so many practices you're currently, you know, putting yourself through because of what your friends told you. Don't do that again. Let your vagina be. If you damage your vagina, you're going to be in pain physically, you're going to be in emotional pain, and you might end up damaging your fertility. Okay? Do we have any other question? You still have about 10 minutes, but if you don't have any other question, I'm going to draw the curtain for today. But please remember, we can all together help ourselves to actualize our potentials by taking care of the important aspects of our life. Okay. Doc, what's vaginal atrophy? You see, my admin, overnight, they've all become consultants in medical practice. Okay, so by default, when a cell atrophies, it means the thickness, the fleshy nature, the way God made it, the number of cells in that particular area is reduced. So in vaginal atrophy, it means that the size, the musculature, the number of cells in the vagina is shrunken, is reduced. So atrophy means reduction in size. And this can happen to any woman. If you pay attention to your vagina, if you pay attention to any girl's vagina, you will notice that uh, when girls are younger, they, they tend to have fleshy vagina. Another thing you have to know very well is the parts of your female reproductive system. So I expect you to know your mom pubis. Mom pubis is that area of the vagina where hairs will normally grow. That fleshy area is called the mom pubis. Then if you go down, you begin to get to your labia minora and labia majora. Labia majora is the part of the vagina that sandwiches the labia minora. The labia majora and minora will now meet to form your clitoris. Now, your clitoris, it's, it's the most sensitive part of your external female reproductive system. Now, as you're getting older, as the level of your estrogen is reducing, the cells in your vagina will begin to also reduce. So your vagina will start atrophying. Atrophy means it will begin to lose the cells. It will begin to lose the muscles in the vagina. Now, what can you do? Any area in the body you have muscles, they can atrophy. So what can you do as a woman to make sure you help your vagina in making sure it won't go through a long-term process of atrophy? You exercise the vagina. The same way you exercise your muscles, you can exercise the vagina. You can involve yourself in Kegel exercise. You can drink a lot of fluid. You can take good care of your vagina. When you do this, your vaginal muscles can also be in a good place. So Kegel exercise is one of the exercises that will help your vagina. When you're exercising the vagina muscles, you're increasing the level of blood supply to the vagina. When you increase the level of blood supply to the vagina, you are increasing the immunity. You are protecting the vagina from developing any infection, from developing any inflammation. 
So if you don't know how to involve yourself in pelvic floor muscle, of which Kegel exercise is an example, learn how to perform Kegel exercise. Very, very important. Can I, I love this question. So atrophy is a process that all vagina will go through as you age. So when you get to, if you pay attention as a woman, I want you to pay attention to your body. Just take a moment. Forget all this spiritualization of your vagina and your penis and lovemaking. Just be in the now. When you go back today, study your body. Strip yourself of all, of all articles of your clothing. Take a good look at yourself in the mirror. Pay attention to your body. You will notice that as you're getting older, there are some aspects of your body that will be changing. The vagina is part of it. Now, some women will also notice that as they are getting older, they will begin to develop gray hairs in the, in, in the pubic hairs in the vagina. It's expected. It's natural. It doesn't mean you have cancer. I actually have one client that came in. She was freaking out. Oh, doc, I suddenly noticed gray hairs in my vagina. Is that cancer? Uh, and I laughed myself off my seat. It's expected. If you notice, I'm growing gray hairs some, you know, around my, my mustache and my beards. It's expected. As you're getting older, your hairs will start changing. Matter of fact, I'm actually looking for someone that will help me to grow completely gray hairs because I, I learned that if you have it, it means you're going to have a lot of money. Okay? So just let your vagina be that going through the normal process. Okay? So please, if you have other questions, ask. We, have, we still have four minutes and I'll provide you feedbacks. If you haven't registered for the event tomorrow, I am practically giving you a lifeline. This might be the opportunity your family needs to break the backbone of infertility. Invite your husbands, invite your boyfriends, invite your fiance, whatever they are. Let's come together, let's fellowship. We have three panelists. I will be there, Dr. Nietzsche will be there, and our guest presenter, Dr. Dega, will be there. You do not want to miss this. We are getting into December. By December, we have a special event on the 31st in our group, a crossover clinic. A crossover clinic when all our members will come with their positive outcome and we give God the glory and we launch ourselves into 2022. So I'm challenging you today to take a bold step. You can still become pregnant in 2021. You can still make it happen. But nobody can help you if you don't help yourself. So if you guys have hit that brick wall, you felt this is it. I want to challenge you to try one more time. Come, let's fellowship tomorrow. We are going to crack the backbone of infertility. I have never been bullied by infertility. I have won so many wars against infertility. And I don't do it by myself. God is with me. Once you believe in me and I believe in you, God is going to do it. So I'm challenging you today. Cry no more. Come, let's fellowship. Go and register today. Today is the deadline. Tomorrow, 9 p.m., we're going to go there. Make sure your partner is attending. Bring all your questions. We will answer them. No matter your problems, you can become a mother. Okay? Do we have any other questions? If you have further questions, this is your opportunity. If today is the first day of attending, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Please remember to subscribe. Share this video with anybody you know who is having issues with vaginal dryness. Learn how to discuss about your vagina. It's part of your body, okay? Teach your younger ones about their vagina and the role. Stop making it look like it's a sin. Stop spiritualizing it. The earlier you talk about it, the better we can know if it's okay or not okay. Okay? One more minute, then I'm done. But please help your friends. The best gift you can give your friend this Christmas is to connect them to where they can get help. We can help you in this group. Good evening, Doc. What's the cause of miscarriage? So this is outside the confines of today's topic. The majority of miscarriages are caused by what we call chromosomal abnormality. Chromosomal abnormality. So what's chromosomal abnormality? Normally, your mother has 23 sets of chromosomes. She's going to bring today 
party, your father will bring 23 sets of chromos onto the party. They will join it together to form you. You will have 46 sets of chromosomes. Now, in course of making that baby, if there is any error, either from the father or the mother, there will be what we call abnormality. The body doesn't want anything that is not superior. When this happens, it will be abnormal. And the body will say, you know what? This pregnancy will no longer proceed. We are going to abort this pregnancy, or this pregnancy is going to be still bad. So that's what happens in majority of miscarriages. Miscarriage is the unintended loss of your pregnancy before 20 weeks. If it happens beyond 20 weeks, it's caused still birth. Now, there is nothing you can do about your chromosomal abnormality. But there are so many other factors that might likely lead to miscarriage we can pre prevent. Cervical incompetence, infection, inflammation, and any other factor that might likely lead us to losing a baby, we fix it. The ones we can't fix, we leave it to God. Okay? All right. My time is up. Thank you for coming. The next clinic will be on Tuesdays. So our YouTube clinics is on Tuesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, U.S. Then on Saturdays, 6 p.m. Nigerian Time. Today, we actually postponed it to 7 p.m. because we had an event that clashed. So I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you guys tomorrow if you're attending the retreat. If not, I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Until I see you, God bless you and enjoy your evening. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye for now.